Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. One dead and 21 others injured following crash along Washington Boulevard. Sarah launches probe into late counselor's death. And later in sports, reggae girls face host to Brazil in second friendly international this evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. We begin with news that the driver of a coaster bus is now in police custody after a motor vehicle crash along Washington Boulevard this morning. A female passenger died and more than 20 others injured. According to the police, one of them is in critical condition. Our reporter Jamila Maitland was on location and filed this report. There is free-flowing of vehicular movement along Washington Boulevard in the vicinity of Duane Park. But earlier this morning, it was just chaos, bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And that was because there was a major vehicular accident here around 9 a.m. or so. According to the police report, it included a truck and a coaster bus. The bus was coming from that direction when it swerved from another vehicle and collided into the truck. The truck was carrying water, and so we just can't imagine the amount of chaos that took place this morning. I'm going to walk along the corridor where the incident took place just to show you the remnants of what happened. We're seeing the broken um, car, broken vehicle windows. We're also seeing a mic. We're seeing water bottles, as I said before. There was also a screen that was here, a television set, and it was because of the entertainment system that was inside of the bus. We spoke to a vendor who basically gave us his account of what took place. The driver them, they need to take them one little time. They might go too hard. You understand? They need to take time drive. Trust me. A people life them are carry and I can go them a drive with. When the bus are come up the road, then the truck, the truck, truck change lane. The truck change lane, the bus are come on speed. So you know the thing set. So they come in my come now, so when we just slam the next side I bus in I truck. The St. Elizabeth police have arrested a man who was found with three illegal guns on Monday. Head of the St. Elizabeth police, acting superintendent Coolridge Minto says at about 4 p.m. the man was driving a Nissan station wagon along the Goshen Main Road when he was stopped. The guns were seized following a search of the vehicle. During the search of the vehicle, three illegal firearms were found hidden in the compartments of the vehicle. The firearms include two Taurus 9mm pistols, one Smith & Western revolver, as well as two magazines. The driver was arrested and the motor vehicle seized. I wish to commend the officers for the detail and diligent search which resulted in the seizure of these weapons. He says this is part of ongoing operations. We have in fact seen an increase in the number of firearms seized in the parish when compared to the corresponding period for last year. So far, we have seized 18 firearms when compared to 14 for the same period in 2023. This investigation is ongoing. The intel that we have now suggests that the driver was on his way to meet with an individual in the parish. And so we're conducting and continuing investigation surrounding this, this incident. The Southeast Regional Health Authority says it's investigating the circumstances surrounding the, the death of late counselor for the Morant Bay Division, Rowan Washi Bryan. It comes amid allegations of negligence at the Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas. Karen Simpson reports. <laughs> This was a scene outside the Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas just 24 hours after the late counselor Rowan Bryan was laid to rest. Protesters argue that the hospital is woefully under-resourced, which they insist contributed to his death. If this hospital was working the way it should work or we intended to work, my good friend Councillor Bryan may, just maybe, he will be still alive today. We need a better health care. We need CT scan. We need everything that we have to fly. God told our own. God told our take one taxi. God told four. 
They also contend that most of the functions needed to save lives are not available. If we don't have these labs and we don't have ambulance to transport these people, then we are operating a morgue, not an hospital. We want a hospital. There are enough morgues in St. Thomas. What we need is an hospital. What we have here is a big clinic. Once they get to the hospital, they should have some level of confidence that they are going to be cared for. And their relatives, their families should not be worried or scared, wondering if they are going to come back out of the hospital. They are calling on the government to intervene. So I'm calling on the government of today to take the necessary action so that the people of St. Thomas can have a hospital that they can have hope and confidence in. In the meantime, the Southeast Regional Health Authority says an investigation has been launched to determine the circumstances which led to Mr. Bryan's death. In a statement, it said the board of Sarah will be advised as soon as the investigation is complete. It further said the management of the Princess Margaret Hospital has met with Mr. Bryan's wife and a family friend to discuss the issues raised. Sarah says all efforts are being made to ensure patients accessing various public health facilities receive the best possible care. Carrie Ann Simpson, TVJ News. A little over a month after the health department threatened to close down Crossroads Market in St. Andrew over unacceptable conditions, the facility's upgrades are being fast-tracked. As you'll hear in this report, a sanitation exercise over the weekend proved the unslightly and unsanitary concerns raised by the department. It's not uncommon to see roaches the size of rats and rats the size of cats at the Crossroads Market in St. Andrew. That's according to a police source who stationed just a stone's throw away. The rodents feed from meat and food scraps disposed by vendors and meat operators in the market. In April, Chief Health Inspector Grayson Hutchinson threatened to close down the market over its conditions. On Sunday, this was Mayor of Kingston, Andrew Swaby. I am so disappointed that when I get here this morning that I could have seen meat just thrown, thrown down on, on there. It's certainly not a good way of practicing public health, of public, public health standard. And I'll be having a meeting that they cannot comply. We will have to ask them to leave. During a sanitation exercise, Mr. Swaby says a secured waste storage site will be built so vendors can properly dispose of their garbage. According to the vendors, the garbage collection is inadequate. The health department, however, said that doesn't justify the uncontainerized garbage. A gully also runs adjacent to the market. Garbage was also seen strewn across the collapsed fence. We will be uh, constructing a garbage house that will be properly ventilated and garbage has to be disposed of in the right way. The, 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 the vendors, they have to bag their garbage and we can lock it up where it also will be taken up the garbage. Currently it's taken twice a week and said to the technical team that is woefully inadequate. So we are going to work, work on that. On the inside, workmen remove the chairs and stools in order to properly clean the facility. Work is also being done to upgrade the bathrooms. We've gone through the proper tendering process and we're making sure that by the end of the week that the customers of the market will be have proper sanitary convenience. That aside, the municipal corporation says the compound will be paved. He's announced a two-week completion timeline for the works. Jamila Maitland, TVJ News. The issue of introducing bike lanes on the nation's roads is back again in the spotlight. This following news on Sunday that Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton was knocked off from his bicycle by a car. The issue was raised on Radar Jamaica's Beyond the Headlines Monday. According to the National Road Safety Council, 11 pedal cyclists, 34 pedestrians and 57 motorcyclists have been killed since the start of the year. The alarming statistics have sparked outrage and calls for actions from advocacy groups with Island City Labs Executive Director Doreen Duncan pointing to a systematic bias in the design of the nation's thoroughfares. I think if we're being honest, are, are not 
super effective, right? That really sort of blame the victim if you listen to them and really ignore the conditions that particularly pedestrians have to traverse in, right? Not to mention, you know, in lots of places on new roads at Barbican expansion, um, there are these ridiculous jersey barriers that NW has put in the middle of the road as, you know, kind of a hurdle for pedestrians to jump over, right? So I don't think you can tell people not to be a victim when, you know, we members of the government are designing spaces and designing roads intentionally that are putting both pedestrians and cyclists at risk. But Dr. Lucian Jones, a vice chairman of the National Road Safety Council, is endorsing the move to establish bicycle lanes. Dr. Jones says this will enhance road safety and reduce the risk of accidents involving motorcyclists. What they are recommending is that you have some kind of connection with all the, the lanes so leading in a particular direction. So people, for example, who want to ride, for example, from Harvey Tree to Crossroad, they are doing it for a purpose. They are going to work, they are going to take the bus there, they are going to get a taxi there, they are going to buy something there. You are putting a lane that suits the riding habits of people and where they want to go and what they are going to do. Dr. Jones went further. And secondly, if you're going to do that, you have to get people to slow down. If you hit somebody at 30 kilometers per hour, that person may survive. If you hit that person at 50 kilometers per hour, you have a 20% chance of living. So in many cities in the world nowadays, the speed limit is 30 kilometers per hour. And yes, we hear the argument that it may cause traffic congestion. But to the contrary, what they have shown is that it evens out traffic and traffic actually flows faster. It may sound counterintuitive, but it's true. Nekinski Robinson, TVJ News. The private sector organization of Jamaica is calling on Jamaicans to give the national identification system a chance to work. PSOJ President Mitra Siaga believes that the new system will make it easier to do business in the country. Anthony Log reports. The Senate on Friday passed the regulations governing the National Identification System NIDS, and so now it will be debated in the lower house. Already, the private sector organization of Jamaica, PSOJ, has thrown its support behind it. Metro Siaga is the president. The private sector organization of Jamaica fully supports the implementation of needs. And we feel it's been a long time coming. We feel that it's going to be very useful for the country. We feel it's going to allow people to utilize services that the government offers much more easily. We feel it's part of us growing up growing up as a country, it's part of bringing us into the 21st century and we feel it's a good, good move. Positive outlook from Mr. Siaga, however, some Jamaicans have reservations. Their biggest concern, data protection. During her presentation in the Senate on Friday, Minister with Responsibility for Skills and Digital Transformation Dana Morris Dixon sought to assure the country that the system is robust and that the NIDS data will not be shared without an individual's consent. We asked Mr. Siaga whether he was satisfied with what was outlined. Absolutely I am. I know we have gone above and beyond and we have brought in experts from all around the world and the level of protection is there. With the regulation sent to the lower house, it's left to be seen whether more Jamaicans will embrace NIDS. I think that change is often difficult. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. It's now time for the Business Minute. Wigton Wind Farm made a 63% increase in profit for the financial year ending March 2024. After meeting tax obligations, the company made just over 839 million Jamaican dollars. For the 2022-2023 financial year, Wigton earned 309 million dollars. Wigton Wind Farm's revenue totaled 2 billion Jamaican dollars, down from the 2.2 billion made in the similar period ended March 2023. More favorable wind conditions, which boosted production and a tax rebate, had a positive impact on the results. Japan's transport ministry raided the headquarters of motor giant Toyota on Tuesday as a scandal over faulty safety data escalated. The world's largest car maker has apologized for providing incorrect or manipulated data for safety certification tests. The scandal has shaken the Japanese car industry, with rivals Honda, Mazda and Suzuki also admitting to submitting faulty data. Toyota sold more than 11 million passenger vehicles in 2023. It has said the findings do not affect the safety of vehicles already 
already on the road. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Hal Shane Burke. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, Trinidad and Tobago's National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines has condemned the recent attack at the Port of Spain General Hospital, where four individuals were killed in a shooting incident at the Accident and Emergency Ward. The country's Health Minister, Terence Dayal Singh, has since arranged for psychological treatment and counseling for medical staff who were present at the time. The victims have been identified as Jaden Reyes, Jonathan Arjun, Kevin King, and Peter Williams. On the international scene, large fires broke out in northern Israel overnight. Israeli police attribute the blaze to rocket fire from southern Lebanon. Approximately 4,000 dunams of land were consumed, but firefighters managed to gain control. Scores of residents had to be evacuated. The blaze came after Israel warned Monday that a heat wave was expected and cautioned against lighting fires in forests. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Kelly Shaw Williams. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report.